Of the range of insecticides that are registered for silverleaf whitefly control, there are two key products that have been in use for whitefly management over the last 15 years. These two products are the insect growth regulator pyroproxifen and the knockdown product diophanthyron. And to get the best out of these products, it's really important to understand how they work and also consider their use in the framework of a resistance management strategy. Pyroproxifen works at three points within the whitefly life cycle. It sterilises the adult females and prevents them from laying viable eggs. Any eggs that are within the crop are also prevented from hatching. And it prevents the emergence of the pupae into adults. So what you see over time is a reduction in numbers as the adults die of old age and are not replaced by those nymphs that are coming through. So this product takes a considerable period of time to work and you won't see significant field reductions quite often until around day 18 to 21. Pyroproxifen is translaminar, so once it's applied, it absorbs into the leaf surface and is active within the plant for a two to three week period. So as the white fly move around the canopy, even though they might be in the lower reaches of the canopy, they only need to move up and feed on that treated foliage once every three to four days to remain infertile. One of the key strengths of pyroproxifen is that it's very specific to silverleaf white fly and is very soft on the natural enemies that feed on white fly. And those natural enemies remain very active within the crop canopy, compounding the control provided by pyroproxifen and remain long after the pyroproxifen's effects have worn off. So in order to get the best out of pyroproxifen, we really want to use it as part of an integrated pest management program where we've set the crop up to conserve and protect the natural enemies that are also helping us manage this pest. Diophanthyron in comparison is a knockdown product. After application, diophanthyron enters a fumigant phase where it's activated by sunny conditions. And that fumigant action is very effective at targeting the white fly that are on the undersides of the leaves. A key consideration for using diophanthyron is that you have three to four sunny days after application. Using this product during cloudy weather or when rain is expected is really going to take away from the efficacy of this product. So conditions during application are really important. Pyroproxivin and diophanthyron have been used extensively for silverleaf whitefly control throughout the cotton industry for the last 15 years. At the Department of Agriculture and Fisheries, we've been monitoring resistance levels to these products. And what has been particularly concerning has been rapid increases in tolerance to our cornerstone product, pyroproxifen. Jamie Hopkinson, our entomologist who leads the resistance testing program, will talk you through some of the changes that he's observed over the last couple of seasons and the implications that it will have for pyroproxifen usage going forward. So in this lab, we test for silverleaf whitefly resistance to a number of insecticides including pyroproxifen. With pyroproxifen, over the last few seasons we've seen a shift from susceptible populations to tolerant populations and in the 2015-16 season we found the first evidence of resistance in the northern New South Wales area. So that trend has continued to evolve this season. We now have several regions with pyroproxifen resistance including St George, McIntyre, Guida and Nemoy valleys. But the levels of pyroproxifen resistance seen this season wouldn't translate to field failures at this stage, but the trend that we're seeing clearly demonstrates the product could fail in the near future. So in light of these changes to resistance levels, the TIMS technical panel is reviewing the use of pyroproxifen. The objective of these changes is to slow the development of resistance and also protect the efficacy of pyroproxifen going forward. In the coming seasons, it will be critical that people use the most up-to-date guidelines for pyroproxifen use. This can be found in the most recent cotton pest management guidelines.